welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Ellie Arquette. I'm a psychic medium, a spiritual life coach, and founder of Ellie Arquette Cosmetics. And I have news, I am launching my new fall collection on November 11th at 11 a.m. on my website, Ellie Arquette Cosmetics. If you guys are interested in my makeup and skincare, definitely check it out. I want to show you guys today, I'm wearing this color sick. I've named this color Gaia because it's like this earthy, like burnt brown gorgeousness. So all my lipsticks are vegan, organic, cruelty free. And so they don't, uh, they don't come off your goddamn face. That's our slogan. Our lipsticks won't come off your goddamn face, but it's not going to dry your lips. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. They can be used as eyeliner, eyeshadows, blush, and lipstick. So please check it out. They're going to be available. We have three new colors and they're gorgeous. I have a uh, swatching video on my vlog channel. If you guys want to see what it looks like, uh, go check it out. And la 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 la. And please subscribe, share, and like. And I was just going to say really quickly, I noticed under my analytics that I have 50% of the people that are watching my videos lately are not subscribed, but like they're coming back to the channel and just like watching my videos. Literally, you guys, it's free. Please do me a favor and just hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. It's gonna help me out a lot. And if you give, if you guys give my videos a thumbs up, this all just like helps me out so much because YouTube will see that people are engaging and liking these videos and then YouTube is going to promote the channel and the videos for me so we can get some subscribers and viewers. Anyways, so um, please subscribe, share, and like, and let's get into today's video. So today, I wanna talk about how ungrateful men are. It's like if you give them love and sex and marriage and everything, it's not, a, it's not enough. And then if you take care of their children and stay home and be a stay at home, that's not enough because then they go and cheat on you. It's like, they're just like never content. Which brings me to a discussion about just don't get married. Literally, I think what I want to do in my life is I want to have my own place. And then I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody eventually sometime in the future. And you're going to stay over there in your place. And I'm going to stay over here in my place. And basically, we'll just see each other on the weekends. And then you're going to get the hell out of my face most of the days because... I don't know, I just don't wanna put any more effort into like relationships because I did it for six years. It got me nowhere, it was distracting, it was financially burdensome, emotionally, physically. It's just, I hate it, I just hate it. Um, so when I saw this case, uh, I was like, oh my God, this is perfect for my audience and I wanna tell you guys, I know I'm rambling on and I always do this, but the other reason I wanted to do this uh, case is because the judge, call this person demonically possessed. And I was like, ooh, they're talking about demons. So this is a perfect video for us to do because I'm gonna tell you guys the backstory and then we're gonna pull some cards on it to see what the hell is wrong with this guy. Now this story's freaking crazy. I'm gonna try and not cuss. Lately I'm noticing like I'm cussing a lot and we don't want that on this channel. We wanna keep it classy. Anyways, sometimes I'm savage, sometimes I'm sweet. So it is what it is. So let's get into it. This is about the murder of Tara Lynn Grant. This was an absolutely amazing, beautiful woman. So Tara Lynn Grant was raised in the suburbs of Michigan. When she graduated from college, she found herself like this beautiful home in Detroit and she married her boyfriend who was like not really a match for her as actually was like the opposite of her. And, um, so they buy this house together and they settle down. So the husband's name is Stephen Grant and this guy was like not really attractive. He was kind of dumpy, kind of just like, like not really, didn't, wasn't really ambitious, didn't really know what he wanted to do. He didn't finish college. So he was just kind of like whatever. And she was a very ambitious, uh, smart, beautiful, like a perfectionist and like was really, really driven and wanted to like, you know, do really well in her career. So it was kind of like determined early on that he was kind of like a loser, okay? And since he wasn't really, didn't really know what he wanted to do, and he was kind of working part-time for his dad at his shop, 
so she had to kind of put put on the the big pants and make money so they could afford to have a life so that's exactly what she did so she started like advancing and um doing really well in her work and they had two children a boy and a girl and therefore it was kind of decided that since he doesn't have a job he doesn't have any skills he doesn't have the education for him to stay home and take care of the kid he's as as he kind of you know steps into this like stay at home dad vibes she starts climbing that ladder of success corporate ladder and and just embarks on a very lucrative uh, um, successful business and becomes like a CEO of the uh, a, a very big uh, corporation like an international corporation so because of Tara's like ambition and drive the family like her and her husband and the kids started having like an amazing life they had a beautiful home brand new cars that went on vacations like it was like perfect she paid for everything you guys the guy didn't have a job like he worked part-time at his father's like machine shop or whatever so she provided for everything like mortgage groceries taxes car payments vacations she paid for everything all this man had to do was shut the fuck up like i'm sorry i'm cussing but all he had to do was shut the fuck up and just stay there and since he didn't have a job since he didn't have any credentials or skills to get out there and you know make something of his life and and he was lucky enough to be married to somebody like that that wanted to provide for it. like who i don't know any woman that would want to do that honestly like when i think about it i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to be turned on with a man that wants to stay home and just i don't know how i would feel i don't know i just feel like when men are left alone, a lot of shit happens. Like it's better for them to be busy with responsibilities or they're gonna start screwing around and stuff like that. And that's exactly what happened. So soon, Steven started bitching to his wife like, I can't take care of the kids and do everything. You're never here. So they hired a young, beautiful 18 year old babysitter from an agency to come and live with them her name was like verena or something like that i don't know what the hell is wrong with these women these business women i totally understand like you're busy right and you want to have help at home right why are you hiring an 18 year old beautiful young girl to come and live in your house while you're on business trips do you want your husband to cheat on you it's almost like you're just providing the 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 the, the you know you know that thing like you're just like providing it for him because of her job um she would have to fly so she would basically fly to her job monday to friday and then friday night she would jump on a plane and then fly back home to spend with her with her husband and kids so she was basically gone Monday to Friday and then she spent Friday Saturday Sunday with her family and then jumped back on the plane on Monday every week it was the same every week was the same so this started kind of creating a lot of problems between between them and their relationship because he felt neglected he felt emasculated that like you know his wife was like out and about and um it's so weird because the trash people are out there and we got this the story gets like really ugly and this is like oh my god it's so ugly so anyways he started having an affair what do you know with the babysitter with the 18 year old babysitter that's living with them okay while the wife is on business trips monday to friday she in there to see what's going on okay so apparently the babysitter was sleeping with him in his bed when the kids would go to school the kids had no idea what was going on and he was having a sexual romantic emotional relationship with the babysitter so on friday february 9th 2007 tara comes home and she finds out that she actually has to fly back to work Sunday because they had this super important like international meeting or whatever and she couldn't fly back on Monday so she had to go like a day early and this for some reason really like upset Steven in his mind he thought his wife was having an affair why because he was having an affair with the babysitter so he was like 
oh my god she's having an affair and so they got into this huge argument right and it's really ironic i have to talk about this as a side note Every, anytime you're in a relationship with someone and they start accusing you of like oh you're cheating or whatever you're doing it's like most likely they're doing it and they're just projecting onto you just like a side note because that's happened to me before and then i found that the person was actually cheating on me and i was like you son of a bitch you're gonna go to hell i'm gonna send you there myself so anyways um the other thing i was gonna say this also kind of reminds me i mean this nothing happened to gwen stefani but gwen stefani was also a very successful musician obsessed with her she's gorgeous she's beautiful she's super talented and her husband cheated on her with their nanny like when she was giving birth to their last baby in the hospital he left her and went home and had sex with a nanny and then she found all the text messages and like all the photos and stuff like that between them on her son's ipad this is just really nasty like when you are working so hard as a man or a woman to provide for your family and to pay for things and to have a good life and to share your life and to build your life with another person and they cheat on you and they backstab you. That is the lowest of lowest of low. Like I can't even, I don't even know what I would do if, you know, I mean, I my person cheated on me and I kind of found out. I mean, I don't know specifically who this person is, but I know for sure he did. So... I'm protected by Kali. I don't know if you guys know who that is. I'm protected by Kali and she's going to take care of my enemies. Anyways, back to the story. So Friday, February 9th, 2007, Tara comes back and she's like, listen, I got to go back, you know, Sunday night. I'm so sorry. And he's like, no, this is stupid. This is bullshit. You're probably having an affair on me and who are you sleeping with? So they get into this huge argument and he, he hits her and she falls to the ground and he, and she's like, that's it. I'm going to file for divorce. I'm going to take the kids and everything. I pay for everything. So I'm entitled to everything. And you're going to become homeless. And you're going to learn not to blah, 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 blah. Because like he hit her, right? So when he hears that, he literally like loses his mind, right? And anyways, let me tell you guys the other stuff before I get to the crazy stuff. So that's what happens now. What he does is he calls the cops, right? And he calls the cops and he's like, oh my God, I just got into this crazy fight with my wife. She's driving back to the airport and I'm really worried about her because I kept calling her because I wanted to talk to her because I, I wanted us to like part in, you know, on good terms. And I just, you know, I'm really worried about her. And the police was, the police was like, okay, well, you know, we will keep our eye on, on, you know, if we hear anything and stuff. And they're like, well, we can't really report her missing because she just like left the house and stuff and he's like oh I know I know I just wanted to say I just I'm kind of worried about her it's not like her not to like you know pick up the phone so then the next day comes and basically she was no show at her job and this is not like her because everyone that worked with her her friends and family and co-workers like she was a perfectionist she was punctual and she would have never not called and said hey I'm running late or there's a delay or I'm stuck at the airport like there was no nothing from her she wasn't answering her phone nobody knew where she was she wasn't at the airport they didn't know where she was at by the way I have to talk about my lipstick I mean my lipstick is gorgeous and it looks really weird like in the tube but when you put it on your face it just dries down to this like gorgeous freaking color I'm living for it sorry so a couple of days goes by by the third day or whatever Stephen Grant calls the sheriff's office and he's like listen I have to report my wife missing uh, her work doesn't know where she is and um yeah we we don't know what's going on and I'm super worried about her and I need you guys I, mean, I want to file like a missing uh report and he uh himself decides to like contact like the media and then goes on these like public like media outlet and starts like crying I put in the beginning of the video so you guys could see He's all crying and shit like, oh my God, like my wife is missing. If you know where she is or if, or if you're somewhere, please just call us and let us know that you're okay. So he puts on this Oscar worthy freaking like, I'm just looking, I'm reading my emails. He puts on this like amazing Oscar worthy like performance. Like, oh my God, my wife, where are you? I love you. Please call us. Detectives started kind of feeling a little you know their sixth sense kind of is like they're like he's he's just like a bit too much right uh so they started questioning himself and then the more they question 
question him about what happened between them, the more they kind of get like a weird vibe from him. So they decide to get like, you know, to like um, get a search warrant and go to his house. Okay, before they get a search warrant, what happened was like the detectives basically find out of the phone records that Stephen Grant was having a sexual relationship with the babysitter, Verena, whatever her name is. She's just German, 18 year old, beautiful girl. 18 years old, you guys, 18 years old. And um, so they're like, okay, maybe this is the motive here. So the babysitter got jealous and got killed her or you know he killed her because he's in love with the babysitter or whatever. So that's why they get a search warrant to uh, search the property at his house. Now, prior to this, they searched everywhere, right? They did search like the surrounding, like the back of the house, like outside of the house, they searched for everything and they didn't really find anything. And, and uh, so they were just like continu continuously looking in all the parks and, and the woods, you know, woodsy area and stuff and they couldn't find her. The police checked morgues, airports, hospitals, um, national parks, like they did everything. Kind of reminds me of like the Brian Gabby situation. And they like literally looked under everything and they just couldn't find. March 2nd, 2007, the police finally gets like the, you know, they get their warrant and they're like, they show up to Stephen Grant's house and they're like, we want to come inside the house and, you know, search the property. And he's like, oh, that's totally fine. And since he wasn't like a, a person of interest or anything like that, he was kind of free, right? And he was like, well, uh, if you guys don't mind, I don't, I'm just going to be like in the way what about if I just like take the dog out for a walk and you guys can just go through the house and they're like all right that's fine so they let him go around the same time uh the detectives were also looking into uh Stephen Grant's workplace which was this machine shop that was owned by his dad now while they were there they found like some hair and blood and uh clothes and things like that of Tara and they thought that was a little weird so they were so there were there were people there that were kind of investigating the the, the shop and then there were people that was like investigating re and searching the house so while this is all happening simultaneously right Steven apparently like fled right so like he 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 left and took his dog and apparently he was like already like prepared he had a bunch of like pills and I think he had bought like a a toy gun and basically he went to one of the parks and was like sitting outside and just like taking pills and he was trying to commit suicide so um so the police is uh, searching the house. They go to the garage and they see this garbage bin, right? And they're they're like, all right, what's in here? And they open the lid and there's like this super thick material garbage bag and they touch it and it's like all soft and shit. So they open it and then they find a fucking torso, like from here to here, just a fucking torso. And they're like, holy shit, this is probably Tara. And they flip out and they freak out and they come out of the garage and they notice that Stephen Grant is nowhere to be found. Obviously they start looking for him. Finally, they find him at this national park and uh, he had like hypothermia and stuff. So he was like airlifted to the hospital. He recovers. And then when he recovers, they basically get a confession out of him. So he confesses on February 9th, 2007, on Friday when Tara came home and that she had to, you know, fly back to Puerto Rico. He started feeling kind of jealous and he felt like maybe she was having an affair and he just like lost his shit and they got into this huge argument. And when he hit her, she said to him like, you're finished. And and um, you are going to become homeless. I'm going to take the kids and I'm going to take that, you know, I'm going to keep the house, the cars and the kids and I'm going to kick you out. And that just like, he freaked out and basically he jumped over her and took his belt and just like strangled her and then killed her. So when he killed her, <clears throat> when the kids were asleep, he put her like in blankets and stuff like that and like dragged her body down the stairs, put her in the car and took her to his dad's uh, machine shop. When he got there, <clears throat> he started dismembering her. Now, he was telling the detectives that I couldn't look at her when I was cutting her, her limbs. So I just covered her face. So he just started like cutting her arms off, her legs off, her head off and just like cutting it and stuff and like put it in like separate like plastic bags, right? 
and went and threw it at like different places like they lived in a really woodsy area there was a lot of like national parks it kind of reminds me of the brian and gabby situation so there was just like you know he was able to like scatter the body everywhere right now all was all that was left was the torso of tara that he had put on the last thing that he was going to get rid of which is so ironic that this happened so basically he um he had put um uh, her torso in this garbage bag on the kids sled it was it was all snowing and stuff like that outside so He's taking it and the tr he's trying to go in the woods and to see where he could bury it, right? The slut like takes off and he's like running after it and stuff and the body like falls out of the bag. So he pushes, push, puts it back into the garbage bag and he's just like, okay, I can't do this right now. So I'm just going to go home and I'm just going to hide this in the garbage bin. And then maybe in a couple of days, I'll just get rid of it. And that's the only reason the torso was in the garbage bin in the garage and just like divine intervention you know what i mean because if he had gotten rid of the the rest of the body the police wouldn't have any sufficient evidence like finding an actual body in the garage and they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to do anything to him really because there was like no evidence and if he didn't confess they would have not been able to find her because he had completely dismembered her and scattered her body like all over the place. I'm going to read you guys this quote. He's like, I hit her, she fell, and I know that she banged her head on the floor. And then she said something like, that's it. I'm going to take the kids. <clears throat> You're going to be fucking homeless. You're a piece of shit. <clears throat> so Stephen says that at that point that he snapped and strangling his wife for approximately four minutes. I choked her. I put my hands on her neck and choked her. She finally grabbed my hand at one point, but it was too late then. I couldn't stop. Then I was, then um, I knew I was going to prison, so I panicked. Uh, this is what when he's confessing to the detectives. And he was like, that's when I thought, okay, I'm going to take her put her in my SUV and take her to my father's shop and just dismember her and get rid of the body, right? Now this whole time that the detectives are looking for Tara, this fucking guy, Stephen Grant, is still sharing his bed with a babysitter. Now the babysitter was cleared because he, she had like an alibi, like actually at the, that evening, like February 9th, 2007, when Tara came back from her business trip, because you know she was coming home she like wanted to give them privacy so she left and she had like met up with friends and stuff like that so she had an alibi that she was not involved at all in this situation so friday december 20 21st so friday december 21st 2007 Stephen Grant was found guilty for second degree murder. However, the prosecution tried to get like first degree, but the jury couldn't like decide on that because they felt like this was not premeditated. Uh, it's like one of those things like he just like snapped and it wasn't like he was trying to kill her before. He just, he just like snapped and it happened. So the judge called this um, Stephen Grant's action demonic barbaric and dishonest as Stephen Grant was sentenced to 50 to 80 years in prison for second degree charges with an additional six to ten years for mutilation mutilation of the corpse with sentence to run concurrently uh so yeah he went to prison and I think has to be like 70 or 80 years old for him to like you know be um eligible for parole so because the judge said this is demonic for you to kill your wife the mother of your children and now the, the kids became basically orphans right like so their mom died the dad is taken away to prison forever and they had a boy and a girl so basically the judge was like you're a piece of shit and you this is the most demonic barbaric case i've ever heard and yeah he's going to be in prison for like 80 90 100 years or something like that so now uh avi i'm going to look at my cards to see what a hell is going on obviously in this case you can totally tell with the way that he looks and the way that he behaves uh he is kind of a wussy he probably has too much estrogen in his body and uh he wanted to be a stay home uh, dad but then 
he started kind of getting jealous of, of his wife's success, right? And he started feeling kind of emasculated. And a lot of people made him feel bad about it. Like, oh, you're married to her? Like, I just don't see you guys together because she was like this super like ambitious, driven, a lot of energy, like a perfectionist, like very like about like success and money and power. And he was just like this dumpy, like weird guy, right? And it made him feel bad. Honestly, honestly, I feel like what happened was like he felt bad. He was emasculated in this relationship, although he should have been grateful. Although if he wasn't happy, he should have just gotten out of this relationship. But he reminds me of most women that are dependent financially on their husband or their boyfriend. And even though they're in an abusive relationship and they're not getting love, they're not getting intimacy, they're not getting emotional support, uh, but they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go because they don't have that financial like independence. I always tell my clients, I don't know if I tell you guys, but I do life coaching, uh, spiritual life coaching. I use psychology and spirituality to like help my clients, right? And a lot of the women that come to, to me that are like in abusive relationships or they're, they suffered from like a narcissistic relationship or whatever, I always tell them that the best thing you can do for yourself is to be financially autonomous. Because if you're in a relationship with someone that you don't want to be in a relationship with, you don't have to be dependent on them and be like, enslaved to them because you don't know how you're going to pay your rent on your own you don't know how you're going to support yourself or you don't know how to you know pay your taxes or pay your bills or be independent on your own that's like my biggest advice for every woman out there even if your husband is paying your bills and he's amazing and he loves you and he takes care of you and the kids you never know like what's gonna happen if he dies, like what the fuck are you gonna do? If you don't have a job, if you don't have a skill, if you don't have any experience and you're just like sitting at home being a mom, like really think about that. I kind of was a little harsh with one of my clients in regards to this. She got so offended that she stopped coming to me. And you know, I can't take people's money and not provide them with a the service and the type of uh, coaching that I know I'm capable of doing because uh, like 99.9% .9 of my clients always get results. So if you don't want to listen to me and you're going to get offended because I speak the truth and I want you to be taken care of and I want you to live your best life, then yeah, don't come to me because I'm an Aries and I'm super, super abrasive and I'm just going to speak the truth and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So this kind of reminds me of this client that I had and she just got all butthurt and I'm just like, dude, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay $3,000 in your mortgage? Your mortgage, if your husband decides to cheat on you and leave you, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay your bills? Think about that. So anyways, having said all that, let me stage myself. I'm going to pull some cards on this piece of shit, Stephen Grant. Sage the cards, and I'm just going to look at this guy really quick, okay? So thank you. Thank you, Spirit. I'm kind of curious about Stephen Grant. <clears throat> Was this premeditated? Was this something that he was thinking about for a while because he was having an affair with this girl and he was like, okay, like if I kill her and get rid of her, I'm probably going to get insurance, the house, and you know, she worked and she made a lot of money. I'm sure they had savings. I'm sure she had money in stocks. I'm sure um, she had money in the 401k, whatever the fuck it's called. And was this premeditated? right was this premeditated or what, what, did he just like lose his shit like and it's just like happened right so let's take a look and see so did was this premeditated what did he just like was he thinking about killing her and then he just found like an opportunity and he did it so thank you spirit thank you spirit stephen grant stephen grant stephen grant grant did he kill his wife laura was this premeditated or it's just like it happened so thank you spirit so thank you, Spirit. These cards fell out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Okay. So, wow. Okay, here we go. So we have the Hierophant and the Devil together. So when the Hierophant and the Devil come out together, my makeup is so gorgeous right now. I can't even deal with this lipstick. Shit, girl. So um, when the, when the Hierophant and the Devil come out together, this talks about toxicity in a marriage toxicity in a relationship toxicity where one person has 
way too much control over the relationship and the marriage, right? And um, the fact that they, the high priestess fell out of the deck is making me feel like because of this energy, this was premeditated. This is my personal opinion. Disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I just feel psychically that this was something that was bound to happen because he was so much under the control of this woman and it emasculated him and he hated it. He didn't want to be a, 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 a stay-at-home dad and and he hated seeing his wife succeeding the way she started succeeding and becoming like a CEO of an international company where she was traveling the world Monday to Friday and then coming home on the weekends. It's like he couldn't deal with the success. It wasn't about the cheating. It wasn't about that he was banging some 18 year old. It wasn't about, yeah, it wasn't about this girl. It wasn't about like, oh, I'm so in love with this 18 year old babysitter that I'm going to kill my wife and dismember her. No, that's not what it, not, that's not what this was about. This was about the toxicity and the control and the, the authority that he was under. Like he was basically under the authority of his wife. Like she wore the pants 100%, 1000%. So this was premeditated and this was bound to happen. Let me see what else Spirit wants to show me. Thank you, Spirit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This card just fell out. The Seven of Swords. Yeah, you guys. The Seven of Swords. So, this was premeditated. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, he wanted... So, he was jealous of his wife's success. He basically... It was... What this did to him, he felt competitive with her because her energy was so masculine, right? She she operated from her masculine side. So when she would come home for the weekends, if he said anything, if he did anything, she would just flip out like like a, like a, like a guy would and be like, "Well, fuck this. I'm going to leave right now." Instead of waiting till, you know, m Monday, I'm just going to get get on get in a car and, and leave right now. And it's really funny because this reminded me of a relationship I had before I moved to LA in Virginia, I was dating an investment banker and he used to travel all the time because he was like an international um, uh, investment banker or whatever. And I was really young, right? I was like 18 or 19. And I used to like, we used to get into this arguments and stuff and he would be like, oh, fuck this. And he would just like grab his like bag and he would just like get on a plane and would leave again. Like instead of, leave, instead of like waiting a couple of days because he was coming back to spend time with me. Because he didn't need to, he didn't need to listen to me. He was like this like high profile international investment banker, and here I am, some eighteen year old, nineteen year old, like nagging him. And he was like, "Get the fuck out of my face! I'm gonna go right." And I feel like she did that to him, which made him even more angry, which made him feel even more upset. And this was premeditated, and he wanted to be like her, but he just couldn't. It was one of those things where I also experienced in my just my recent relationship, where I feel like this this person that I was with my last relationship that I, I broke up with, the narcissist, he hated me, like, underneath. Like, there was this energy about us. Like, every time something would happen and I would say something, he would just give me this, like, backhanded compliments and he would, like, cut me down because he knew he could never be like me because I'm a psychic medium, because I'm special, and I have a relationship with the spirit world, and he saw it, he witnessed it. Uh, when I first bought my spirit box session, and I turned it on in the living room and I was like playing around with it. And I was like, spirit, if you're here, can you say my name? And they said, Ellie. And he was like, holy shit, I heard that. So he witnessed how special my relationship is with spirit. He knew I was a psychic medium. He knew I had, you know, supernatural powers. He saw weird shit happen around me. The people that fucked with me. He witnessed it all and as a narcissist. He hated that about me. He hated the fact that I have something that he could never arrive to. It doesn't matter how much money you're going to make, how popular you're going to become, how good looking you are. You're never going to be able to have what I have. And that made him insane jealous, right? So I feel like Stephen Grant was also someone that wanted to be like his wife, 
like successful and ambitious and driven and super smart and highly intelligent and just knew how to play the game, the corporate game and like climb that ladder of success. And he just was too dumpy and, and just couldn't do that. And that just like killed him. So this was premeditated. He wanted to kill her. He was jealous of her. Uh, he hated her. He absolutely hated his wife. Now, you would think, like, why wasn't he, like, grateful, right? Like, why wasn't he grateful? Like, his wife is paying for everything. He's living in this beautiful big home, brand new cars, vacations. Everything's paid for. He just had to lay there and just, like, watch the kids. So literally, he didn't have to do anything. So, but... The jealousy and the envy, they're really powerful energies. You know, the jealousy and the envy just couldn't, he just couldn't get rid of it. So he ended up killing her. And when you choke someone, that's hateful. Like you could have poisoned her or, you know, take a weapon and kill her, but to choke her and to look at the, your person, like the life, like leaving their eyes, like that's a very personal, personal thing just like how Brian did to Gabby so anyways they found his um, wife's body in this garbage bin that was supposed to be taken care of but he had just brought her back in and just at that moment the next day the, the detectives showed up with a search warrant and that's how everything was revealed so definitely divine intervention and i'm so glad that he is in prison and he cannot get out i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts down below subscribe 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 stop watching my videos if you're not subscribed what a hell 50 percent of you all are watching my videos and you're not subscribing so please subscribe it would help me out a lot if you guys give my video a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next video bye